A vacuum video? Really? Look, I know this is a little bit outside my typical video content, but this thing, this vacuum, has an octa-core CPU and an Adreno GPU that you'd have found on a smartphone just a couple years ago. But why? Well, that's what I want to talk about. This is the Roborock S6 Max-V, and it's a pretty insane robot vacuum. Look, I'm not married. I work a lot, and the last thing I want to do is come home from a long day of work and clean. Now, I'm not new to robot vacuums, and I've actually tried several. In fact, I've been the owner of a Roborock S5 for a couple years now, and even purchased a second one because I was so happy with the way that it performed. Now, some of these vacuums get really, really pricey, but I always felt that the performance of the Roborock line compared to its price was a standout. Their newest model, the S6 Max V, isn't really any different in that regard. The vacuum ships with a variety of accessories. Obviously, you get the vacuum itself, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly. You get a charging dock that is attractive and pretty low profile, as well as a drip mat for said charger. Uh, that's to absorb the moisture that may accidentally leak out from the vacuum's water tank and from the wet pad. Yes, I said water tank. We'll talk about this va vacuum's mopping features in a bit. You'll find an extra E11 filter that, according to Roborock, captures 95% of particles, including mold and dandruff. It's rated for 150 hours of use, but what's nice about them is that they can be taken apart and washed. Now, the debris hopper is of decent size, similar to prior Roborock vacuums. And while it's sufficiently sized, I do wish that it was a little bit larger. If you live in a mid to large home, especially one with pets that shed, you're going to be emptying the dustbin after just about every clean, which can get a bit tiring. Here at the office, where debris is less common, uh, I only have to empty it a few times per week. The S6 Max-V has a pretty familiar but interesting design. It has a lot of features that you would expect from prior Roborock vacuums, like a nice wide beater bar that handles carpet and larger debris, and then that side brush, which helps fling crap into the main suction area's path. In terms of sensors, there are a lot. Uh, you'll find, of course, the old school soft touch bumper, which helps identify obstacles and walls, but you'll also find side sensors to avoid collisions, uh, fall sensors so that it won't throw itself down the stairs, and the LiDAR sensor we've come to expect from Roborock vacuums. It does an excellent job at wall detection and mapping out your home inside of the Roborock app. But most interestingly, and newest to this model, is the Reactive AI Obstacle Recognition. A less fancy way of saying this? Ah, stereo front-facing cameras. And that's where that beefy SOC that I was talking about earlier comes into play. I was extremely skeptical about this, but I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. Now, Roborock's main advertisement for this new hardware function is AI-driven object recognition, and it works, mostly. As long as the room has sufficient lighting, it actually does a pretty good job at identifying and avoiding objects that lay directly in its path. For a number of household kind of common items, it will actually label the obstacle inside of the Roborock app like this shoe, which is kind of neat. But even if it doesn't know what the object is, it will try to reroute around it and continue the cleaning job. Frustratingly, I find that it still struggles with cables quite a bit. So leave your iPhone charger on the floor or an extension cable underneath a table, and the vacuum is likely going to get it stuck in the beater bar. But I would assume that over time, the object recognition improves. And to give Roborock credit, things that my S5 definitely would have sucked up, like a shoelace, the S6 Max-V doesn't. It avoids it, which is really nice. Now, if you're like me, your first thought after hearing about a robot vacuum with optical cameras is probably, nope. Don't want that. Sounds like a privacy nightmare. <laughs> According to Roborock, though, every reactive AI image is captured and processed on device and then immediately deleted thereafter, hence the somewhat beefy SOC. Nothing is stored, according to Roborock, and nothing is sent to the cloud. While I can't confirm the first one, I can confirm the second. Doing a deep packet inspection on the vacuum shows that it sends very little data back to the cloud, presumably just enough for app operation, and isn't sending anything big enough to be image files. Thanks to the application and reactive AI, the vacuum is really, I don't want to say smart, aware. 
You can put it in any room you want, and as long as it has been mapped previously, it knows exactly where it is and how to get back home. In fact, the Roborock app even supports multi-level mapping systems as well. So if you live in a house with multiple floors, you can just carry the vacuum up or down the stairs, push the cleaning button, it will recognize what floor it's on and the settings that you've established for each room. Speaking of settings, yes, the Roborock app allows you to spit, split each floor up into a variety of zones or rooms. And within those rooms, you can vary the suction level, the mopping water volumes, and the order of operations for the cleaning process. You can also just tell the vacuum to clean a specific room that might need attention without having to pick it up and walk it over to the destination. You can set up virtual walls and no-go zones in the app, and the vacuum intelligently recognizes and respects them. No more putting crappy metallic tape on your floor to prevent your vacuum from going somewhere it shouldn't, like we had to do even just a couple years ago. Another thing I really appreciate is the smart top-up charge system. My Roborock S5 was smart enough to know it was time to go home before it ran out of juice, but that sometimes meant that it left a room half vacuumed for a couple hours while recharging. The SX Max V knows how much juice will be needed in order to clean an entire room or zone and won't start cleaning that area until it knows it can do it with the remaining charge. It also, if it needs to go back to the dock, won't charge more than it needs to in order to finish the job in a timely manner. No more waiting hours to charge to 100%. Speaking of charge, battery life has been awesome. Way better than the S5. The 5200 milliamp hour battery can clean up to about 3200 square feet or 300 square meters before it needs to recharge, which is really, really nice. Let's talk suction. Boy, this thing sucks in a good way. Roborock claims 25% more suction power over predecessors, and I believe it. On the max setting, it applies a shocking amount of suction for such a tiny vacuum. And while it's certainly not going to rival full-size upright vacuums, it's certainly enough to pick up heavier dirt and the like. It gets loud on max suction mode, as prior Roborock vacuums did, but I find that the turbo mode is a nice balance between powerful suction and quiet-ish operation. Now, mopping is something that I didn't expect to ever use. I, I certainly didn't on my S5, but I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Now, Roborock recommends you only use water inside the tank, which, well, we could argue about the effectiveness of surfactantless cleaning all day, but I digress. <laughs> the S6 Max V utilizes a massive water tank that makes up a lot of the vacuum's total mass and actually draws water through a pump and then spreads it along an even path in front of the mopping pad. The mopping pad gets gross, which is, is good, right? That means it's working. <laughs> What's important is that unlike prior models where the mopping feature was an afterthought, the large tank and in-app settings make the mopping function seem like an essential part of cleanup because you can just leave it on through the whole clean cycle. In rooms where you need heavy liquid application, you get that. In rooms where you need less liquid, you also get that. Now, if you have a mix of carpet and hard flooring, which most homes do, uh, the vacuum will actually hit the rooms that shouldn't be mopped first. Uh, all in all, I think the S6 Max V makes fantastic improvements over its predecessor. It, it's not that those vacuums were bad, per se. I'm still going to use the S5 here at the office where we have a simpler layout and easier routine. But the S6 Max V is undeniably powerful. You pay for it. Uh, this thing is not cheap but it's fast, it's smart, it's customizable, and it's the first robotic vacuum cleaner where I actually look at the cleanup job it did and say, wow, you'll still need to give your home a little bit of attention and love with a real vacuum, getting corners and edges because that's something this vacuum falls short on, but I don't know that there's one that does a better job at cleaning, period. Certainly not at this price. If you're interested in purchasing a Roborock S6 Max V, you can check out the link in the description box below. Other than that, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy.